Welcome back. So we just got this report and it's called the report on the fighting culture of the United States Navy surface fleet. And they conclude that Navy brass focus more on wokeness than on war fighting. Really inspires confidence, doesn't it? As our greatest foreign adversary openly threatens war against us, as they openly instruct their people that they're preparing for war against us, our Navy is apparently more focused on Marxist cults than on defeating China in a naval war that is not a matter of if, but when. This is leaving our US sailors feeling demoralized and unprepared for a war with China. And make no mistake, a war with China will be a naval war. I thought I'd go over some of the highlights of this report, which by the way, was written by Marine Lieutenant General Robert E. Schmidl and Navy Rear Admiral Mark Montgomery. And they compiled this report from 77 detailed interviews with sailors of different ranks and jobs. The report states that the results of this project are unambiguous. There was a broad consensus across interviewees on numerous cultural and structural issues that impact the morale and readiness of the Navy surface force. These include an insufficient focus on warfighting skills, the preparation of zero defect mentality accompanied by a culture of micromanagement and oversensitivity and responsiveness to modern media culture. Oh, look, the media is a big problem here. That's a big surprise to all of us, right? Structural issues identified include lack of resources and consistency in surface warfare training programs and the Navy's underwhelming commitment to surface ship maintenance a problem that spans decades. Concern with the Navy runs so high that when asked whether incidents such as the two destroyer collisions in the Pacific, the surrender of small craft to the IRGC in the Arabian Gulf, the burning of the Bonham Richard, or the other incidents were part of a broader cultural or leadership problem in the Navy. 94% of interviewees responded yes, 3% said no, and 3% said unsure. And when asked if the incidents were directly connected, 55% said yes, which th they obviously are. You don't have to be in the Navy to know that. 16% said no, and 29% said unsure. I mean, these are probably just people who are not paying attention or are, you know, part of the woke culture themselves. There's a lot more to go over in this report, but first take a quick moment to hear about this special offer for my viewers. These days, the future is still more uncertain than ever. That's why people who know what's coming are using today to prepare. You can't wait until the last moment. By then, it's too late. The most important thing you need is long-term storage emergency food. It stays fresh for up to 25 years and will be there when you need it. I strongly recommend My Patriot Supply, America's leader and self-reliance. They're the only source my family uses for emergency food planning. And right now, you can save $50 off a four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 plus calories a day. And saving $50 is impossible to pass up, but supplies are limited. So go to www.preparewithdronetech.com right now and stock up. That's preparewithdronetech.com. There's no time to lose, do it now. This sentiment that the Navy is dangerously off course was overwhelming. And you can see here, do you believe that these incidents are part of a broader problem in the Navy culture or leadership? 94% yes. Do you believe that there's a direct connection between these incidents? 55% yes. The report continues, frustration with non-essential training was found to be overwhelming and not limited to the surface warfare community. Navy leaders have contributed to the morass of requirements, but so have the senior civilian defense leadership and Congress. While programs to encourage diversity, human sex trafficking prevention, suicide prevention, sexual assault prevention, and others are appropriate, they come with a cost. The non-combat curricula consume Navy resources, clog inboxes, create administrative quagmires, and monopolize precious training time. By weighing down sailors with non-combat related training and administrative burdens, both Congress and the Navy leaders risk sending them into battle less prepared and less focused than their opponents. Sailors increasingly see administrative and non-combat related training as the mission rather than the mission itself. Quote, sometimes I think we care more about whether we have enough diversity officers than if we'll survive a fight with the Chinese Navy. Quote, sometimes I think that we care more about whether we have enough diversity officers than if we'll survive a fight with the Chinese Navy lamented one lieutenant currently on active duty. Quote, it's criminal. They think that my only value is as a black woman, but you can cut our ship open with a missile and we all bleed the same color. And yeah, this is the way most Americans think. Most of us are not race obsessed people, okay? But 
uh, Marxists and communists and people who want to subvert our society, those people do care about race and they want to inject it as much as they can into our society, into our institutions, because what will that do? That will divide this country and make us weaker. And you're seeing it in the Navy. Look at this. Uh, I don't want to get super conspiratorial here, but if we do get into a war with China, it will be a naval war. And, oh, surprise, surprise, it looks like our Navy is under attack by some sort of subversive ideology. How in the world has this ideology crept its way into all of our institutions and our military above all? You ask questions about this, you characterize uh, it as a criticism of sailors for being weak. Um, that is a straw man. It's not a criticism of sailors being weak. It's a criticism of your decision to include these books on your professional reading list which ensigns and sailors across your service take very seriously. I just want to give you a sampling of some of the things that are included in books like this. Uh, that The notion that capitalism is essentially racist and racism is essentially capitalist. That the only remedy for past discrimination is present discrimination. The only remedy for present discrimination is future discrimination. That some individuals by virtue of his or her race are inherently oppressive uh, or privileged while others are victimized or oppressed, uh, that individuals can bear some kind of collective responsibility or collective guilt for the actions committed by members of his or her race. Admiral Gilday, how did these books get on your reading list? Sir, I chose a variety of books. There are over 50 books on my reading list to give our sailors a wide range of, uh, of information and that, and that offering books like Kendi's for people to read. And they don't have to agree with every assertion that Kendi makes. I, I don't. Uh, I don't accept every assertion that Kendi makes, and I wouldn't think that uh, that all sailors would as well. But they need to be exposed to it. Clearly obvious to me and others uh, that the murder of George Floyd and the events surrounding that, the discussions in this country about racism, which go back for years and years and years. Yes, I agree. There's a lot of information like that on social media and in our culture. And you're saying, as the senior leader of the Navy, that you want 18-year-old sailors and 22-year-old ensigns to read a book that asserts that capitalism is essentially racist. Do you, do you agree that capitalism is essentially racist? Sir, I'm, I'm, with all due respect, I'm not going to engage without understanding the context of, of statements like that. Um, I, I know you said this in the House Armed Services Committee last week. In what context could the claim that capitalism is essentially racist possibly be something with which you would agree? So I have to go back to the book to take a look at that. You, as the Chief of Naval Operations, are suggesting in your professional reading list that it's a worthwhile endeavor for our sailors and ensigns to, to spend their time reading books like these as opposed to, say, books on maritime strategy or basic seafaring skills. Now, I just want to read some more quotes from some of the people they interview here because it's really scary. Because the Navy, if China does attack or if we get into war with China, the Navy is going to be our, our first line of defense. And right now, if you look at breakdowns of how this war might play out, the U.S. wins pretty much every time, albeit we both would get really hurt, both China and the U.S., but we would come out slightly better than China. And this is based primarily on the fact that we have a much larger Navy that's much more technologically advanced, and we have a lot of very strategic bases in Japan and around the Pacific. That would make it really hard for China to defeat us in a war. But like I said, this victory would only be a slight victory. And so there's not a lot of room for error there. We have to keep our edge. And it seems like this ideology that's been injected specifically into our Navy is going to take away that edge and give China just what they need to be able to perhaps defeat us in a war. Just as concerning is the assertion by interviewees that when combat lethality and ship fighting are emphasized, they are treated in a box checking manner that can seem indistinguishable from a non-combat related exercise. Quote, the Navy treats warfighting readiness as a compliance issue, said one career commander. You might even use the term compliance-centered warfare as opposed to adversary-centered warfare or warfighter-centered warfare. One junior surface warfare officer still on active duty confessed, quote, I don't think that the surface community see themselves as people who are engaged in a fight. What is going on here? I mean, this is really nefarious. Again, I don't want to get super conspiratorial, but it just really seems like we've been infiltrated at every level and that the people who have infiltrated have created this culture. And it's actually leading to the weakening of our Navy 
and ultimately giving China a leg up. The report mentions this incident where a master chief was disciplined after telling sailors to quote, clap like you're in a strip club. So a CNN reporter heard this comment and it led to the master chief's resignation after 30 years of service. The report states the inability of senior Navy leaders to recognize that such a story was fleeting and trivial reinforced the perception that the Navy will not stand behind their own sailors when unfair or unfounded, or in this case, farcical stories make it to print. The trend has not gone unnoticed. It creates the impression in the lower ranks that if Navy leaders are easily cowed by the press and will throw their sailors to the wolves should their names appear in print. It further suggests the profound weakness in the senior rungs of the chain of command. And this is the important part, advertising a critical vulnerability to the sophisticated information operations conducted by foreign actors and all by inviting sailors with personal vendettas to leak damaging information. So not only is the media enemy of the people, it's the enemy of our military. And this shouldn't be news to most of us when there's a Republican administration taking military actions, suddenly the media takes the side of our enemies. And in this case, they may actually be helping our adversaries series to undermine our Navy. And very lastly here, a warning at the end of the report. A major peer level conflict in the 21st century will likely play out largely in the naval theaters of operations. Exactly. Unlike the surface Navy's last major war, which concluded 76 years ago, such a conflict would likely proceed swiftly and not permit significant time for organizational learning once it's underway. At the end of this report, it says, quote, the sailors interviewed for this report do not believe the Navy prioritizes fighting and winning because Navy leaders do not talk about fighting and winning. Unless changes are made, the Navy risks losing the next major conflict. That's all for this one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comment section.